Hi to all. Uh, in the previous video, we discussed about the layout folder. In this folder, discussed about the till layout folder. Now let us discuss about the remaining folders. So, after having layout folder, we have a values folder. If you open the values folder, we are going to get two files. One is strings.xml, other one is styles.xml. So, in this values folder, we are going to maintain the values. Those values you can use across the application. So, in the strings.xml, you'll see the root tag is resources tag, and here we are having the tag. Uh, string tag and we are providing one name and uh, within the tags we are going to provide the value so this is the one string name and this is the string value like that in this file we can declare some strings and colors string arrays in the coming sessions we are going to observe how to create arrays and some other resources also as of now they are providing two strings one is app underscore name and that is the app application name they are providing another one is just a string called hello world that is only we are getting in the layout folder default output is we are getting hello world if you open this you will see text view the text view the text is getting from which xml file in the sense strings.xml only you will see a uh, dead string slash hello world if you create a button here you will see we are getting a notification that see here we are getting small notification what is the notification it is saying that hard coded string button should use at the dead string resource so whenever you are creating strings in Android, that means strings in essence like this. You should declare them in the strings.xml and uh, you can call, you need to call here. Suppose like this, I want to give you the button name is menu. So, what we are doing, we are opening strings.xml and we are creating one string. String name equal to, I am saying that b title and value is suppose menu. Use is, you can reuse this value in any xml file and you can use in the java code also so coming to the activity underscore main dot xml just we are saying at the date string and we are calling control space and you will see so many are coming uh, those are predefined already so we created a b title just we are selecting that we'll see no notification so and we got the name from the strings.xml in this way we are going to create a strings in the strings.xml and styles coming to the styles uh, coming to the styles uh, if you want to apply suppose we have a button for the button we can apply the text color suppose you'll see uh, we are giving some text color that is double f double zero double zero that is red color we have given the text color you can give increase the text size text size i'm saying 25 sp so text size increase like that we want to style any view then we are depending on the styles.xml but in the we have a session like styles there we can discuss about the styles.xml as a beginner as of now we are not working with the styles.xml and remaining values follows also whenever we are discussing the concept of designing application for multiple uh, screens and multiple versions and multiple languages there we are discussing about the remaining values folder as a beginner you need not to worry about this remaining values folder just we need to the importance of the values folder and we are creating some strings in the strings.xml that is the story of the uh, folder and you will come to the libs folder next we are storing the third party java code if you are getting any jar files from the internet from there you are using the code those jar files we need to store in the libs folder so defaultly they are giving one library that is a support jar file the support jar file in the sense from 4.0 version onwards what are the new concepts they have introduced those concepts we can use in the lower versions through the support library so whenever we are discussing that uh, what are the concepts are there newly introduced in the uh, 4.0 version onwards there we can uh, how to use them in the lower version there we can discuss about the support v4 v4 but if you create a project default it will come you need not to bother about this and bin folder we know that clearly the bin folder we are getting compiled classes and uh, executable file assets folder with uh, uh, in assets folder what are the files you are storing those files we are going to call as a static files any kind of file we call them as a static file and dependencies you need not to uh, really learn about these dependencies as of now and private libraries whatever you store in the libs folder those you will get in the private libraries folder and now coming to the 4.4.2 in which version you create a project that version SDK will come under this 
so whenever you are uh, importing the already existing projects the first uh, thing you need to check is whether that project uh, the project sdk is uh, set up successfully or not you need to check that one so you'll get here uh, 4.4 it may be 4.3 or 4.0 or 4.1 next gen folder is very important folder gen folder is a bridge between java code and user interface you'll see separately we are storing images here separately we are creating user interface separately we are creating some values here but if you want to use them in the java code uh, there is a concept called references through references only we are going to use these resources under res folder whatever you create those are going to generate that means whatever you create in the sense you can uh, store some uh, uh, images you can create some new xml files you can create some new folders all when the moment you create them they are going to generate corresponding references under gen folder under r.java you'll see it is our package name r.java r.java in essence r means references here so let us see we have a drawable folder here so here you'll get drawable in the class so so many resources are there that's why just i'm going to use drawable right think a class drawable you'll see class drawable so we have a drawable folder so it's going to maintain first super class is a r class and in that we have a uh, sorry so it's not a super class it's outer class outer class is a r class inside for the drawable concept is going to maintain the inner class called drawable class and if you observe this is a static and final so that you need not to create object for the inner classes just you can call them with the outer class outer class is r r dot drawable dot and you can call the image these all the references only uh, these are all our predefined references in this uh, package only in the sdk only this image was stored so it's going to generate the references so we know that we have a file ic launcher you'll see ic launcher it's generating one reference like that if you store any image under drawable folder immediately it's going to generate a reference here so if you want to use them in the java code suppose we want to use this ic launcher in the java code how to use them simple r dot and uh, the in the class is drawable r dot drawable dot image name like r dot drawable dot ic launcher like that ids whenever we create a button suppose here we have created a button button id is what now button underscore suppose we know that we need to give unique id button underscore menu so how to access them whatever the ids you are giving those are comes under the class called id class you will see id class and we have created button you will see button underscore menu reference so in the moment you create ids when the moment you create xml files when the moment you store some uh, image they are going to generate immediately corresponding reference numbers here these reference numbers only we need to call in the java code to access them to access the resources you will see if you want to call the button how to call the button r dot id dot button underscore menu if you want to call the xml file it's going to generate again the folder called layout folder in that we have an xml file you see activity underscore main so if you want to call this xml file we need to call r dot layout dot activity underscore main like that we have a strings if you want to call the strings we already created the strings here suppose b title so we need to call r dot string dot b title r dot styles like that we are going to access the resources in a java code now let us jump to the java code so that is a importance of the order java it's going to maintain the references and one more thing you need to remember uh, understand that you really you should not modify this order java that's why they are giving clearly notification that auto generated file do not modify this class was automatically generated by one tool called aapt tool from the resource data it found resource data in essence from rest folder only it should not be modified by hand you should remember that one next source folder if you come to the source folder and the source folder only main business logics we are going to develop and if you really open this main dot java defaultly they are giving this java class for us so defaultly we are getting one output is hello world that screen the screen we are going to call in android as an activity so if you execute this we will we'll get the output called hello world right we know already that one so first of all let us have a look on the output and we need to understand really what is happening in the java class so we'll understand step by step once we have a 
look in the output look on the output and here you'll see we got an output a hello world and we created one button in the layout so the concept is first we need to create this layout under layout folder we know already that one and using java code we are going to set the layout to the screen so using java code only we are creating screen in that screen we need to set the content from the layout what we have created here the layout is activity underscore main dot xml and the screen only we call technically here activity so when we call the screen as an activity in a sense whenever one class is extends with the activity class and it has the method called on get method then only we will call an activity suppose you see this is a simple java class we are not going to call this one as an activity you will see we remove the activity programming here that means this is a simple java class now if you execute this you won't get any screen why because we have a content here this is the layout and what we are doing in the java code in a sense we are creating screen and in that screen we need to set the content from this activity underscore main dot xml this is the layout we need to set to the screen then only user can see that layout now but what we did is you see application opened and closed what we did is here we removed that code to create a screen it's a simple java class that's why if i executed we are not getting anything if you want to run application completely compulsory we need to have a one screen here so that's why here we are using the android api that is we use one class called activity class and in from that class uh, from that class we use the method called on create method to create an activity create activity in a sense create screen so let us do that one we extends with class called activity class automatically package will imported whenever you say control space and search the classes and we need to override the method on create method so on create method only will create an activity so non create method will get one a parameter called bundle bundle is a class in android to store some any kind of data temporarily so temporarily we can store the data in the bundle class and we can retrieve the data from the bundle class so this on create method is going to create a an activity completely so when the moment you say any java class extends with an activity class and if you override the method on create method then android is going to treat this java class as an activity or otherwise simple java classes are not treated as an activities in android you need to remember that one now if i execute this application we will get a screen why because the screen is going to create here but we won't get any kind of a user interface that means we need to set the layout to the screen but we are not doing that one why because just we override the on create method on create method just it will create a screen that's it that's why uh, if you if you see that output just we are getting screen but we are not having any kind of a, a hello world or button something here why because we are not setting the layout to the screen so we need to set the layout to the screen that means we need to inflate the layout from the layout folder in this on create method then on create method is going to set the uh, activity content with the layout what we are inflating for that purpose only they are providing a method called set content you we know that clearly we need to call the reference of the xml file how we need to call r dot layout dot activity underscore main the reference we are going to call that's why they are giving clearly inter layout resource id r dot layout dot and activity underscore main save it now this is the way to create an activity to create an activity understanding the default activity what they are providing for us that activity is a main activity and now if you see that output we will get that hello world output and this is the hello world output so next we need to understand finally uh, android manifest dot uh, android manifest dot xml file this is very important and in the manifest file only we have a entire application information and security permissions let us open that one right and if you see the root tag is manifest tag and we know about this line and here it is storing the it is mentioning the application package name or application package name is com.rom.demo and here we are storing the version code and version number in the sense default it will give you the version code and version number is 1 and 1.0 so uh, in the play store every application is having the version 
So default version is 1 and 1.0. Whenever you release the updated versions, we need to change these version numbers. That is the latest version, latest version of the application. And use the SDK. Whenever we are creating application, we are selecting minimum SDK version and target SDK version. That is a lower version and higher version compatibility. Again, you can change them here under uses SDK tag. This application tag is going to mention uh, some more application information there. What is the application launcher icon and what is the application label? Some more options. Is the allow backup uh, property. So our application has given the permission to take the backup uh, from our application and icon. And if you see the launcher, here every application is having the logo. That logo we are setting from the drawable folder with the property called icon property. So at that day drawable and we are calling the icon default icon as a launcher. If you want to change your uh, the logo application logo, just you store them in the drawable folder and call it here. And the label label is application name that is taken from the string XML. That's why the date string app name. And default every application will get one theme. That theme it is getting from the style XML. And next, we need to understand that what are the activities you are running in your application. Those activities compulsory they should register in the manifest file. So defaultly we are getting one activity that is main activity or Java. So main activity should be registered in the manifest file. That's why that activity has been registered with the tag called activity tag. The activity name is registering with the name called uh, with the property called name. And the activity is having the title. The title is if you open an application, the title is this one demo. So that is a, a title uh, activity title that is taken from the strings.xml. Here it's taking again the application name. And we have intent filter tag here. Using intent filter only, we are mentioning that out of a number of activities, which activity should be launched. Suppose in the application we have a five screens. Which screen you want to launch first? That we need to mention with the uh, tag called intent filter tag. So that we are mentioning with the category that is launcher. So this intent filter you can keep in only one activity that you want to launch first. Remaining all just you can say, uh, just you can register them with the property called name and uh, label property. So this is about your Android manifest file. So we'll meet in the next video tutorial. Thank you.